Welcome to the channel. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Right guys, I've got another Christopher Ward here with me today. Allow me to introduce to you guys the C60 Limstone and it's aptly named after the Royal Marine Commando Training Center within Limstone in Devon. Of course, these watches are all approved by the Military of Defense and these are one of the key points within Christopher Ward when we look at the military spec watches. Now this watch is packed full of features. I've absolutely loved having this on the wrist. I've had it for a fair few weeks and I've not took it off. This is probably one of the most technically advanced watches that they offer. Uh, they do have a Christopher Ward first featured within this watch. And I gotta say, it is a super tactical watch um, and very cool. It's been a long time since I've actually reviewed a very cool dive watch. Uh, in recent, I've been looking at all sorts of different watches, but a diver has not come up. Uh, and to see a diver at this level, from a brand like Christopher Ward is absolutely mind blowing. So before getting to the full review, let me give you guys a breakdown of the specifications and dimensions. Specs wise, as you can see, this watch now features a gun metal PVD coated light catcher case. And the case has been upgraded to include not one, but two crowns. Now the secondary crown does operate a inner rotating compass bezel. So that's a first for Christopher Ward. You also have a 120 click unidirectional bezel, which is also loomed. And the loom shot, we'll look at it later on in the review. I gotta say it is absolutely fantastic. You've also got the standard sapphire crystal. Now the movement powering this watch is a chronometer certified movement, as is the same with this current line of crystal board. Uh, you've got the Salita SW200, which as you guys know, is a high beat movement, beating at 28,800 beats per hour. And you've got a 38 power reserve. So the cost grade movement basically means that this watch will operate within minus four to plus six seconds a day through a variety of different positions now to top it all off you also got a monstrous 600 meters of water resistance as i said this watch is a ministry of defense approved and this particular one is made for the royal marines uh, so therefore you've got a very utilitarian tool watch uh, but it does not look basic it looks anything but it's full of exotic and premium features the main one being is that dial if you're wondering what it is it is of course a forged carbon dial now the way they make forged carbon is they chop up carbon into small little bits uh, and little fibers and then they mix it with a resin uh, which then is forged to give it this multi-shade appearance on the dial you can kind of see where the flows of the carbon are and you get a mix of like a sort of a gray and blacks covering the dial you can now you can have up to 500,000 fibers within a square inch so a very high grade technically advanced material used just on the dial of this watch now talking about the first watch from Christopher Ward with that rotating bezel this is how it works you've got a screw down crown which of course operates it and then once that's popped out it allows you to turn the bezel any which way you want and of course that is very practical you know in a military element and not to say they're going to use this to navigate of course they've got advanced technology than that but you guys get what i'm saying so that's quite nice to look at and it works perfectly well uh, and i like the fact that the crown is also screwed down and it has to be due to it being a dive watch now let's talk about prices is this watch going to break the bank well, not really, because it still has a very normal price. Uh, when we look at the Christopher Ward ranges, they all sit around a thousand pound. And this is no different. So for the bracelet version, and the bracelet is again, gunmetal PVD coated. Now you're looking at 1,095 pounds. However, if you opt for a strap option, they do a few different straps. They do a rubber hybrid strap, uh, which is about 960 pounds. And they also do this ocean tide kind of NATO-esque strap um yeah ocean tide material so it seems to be some recycled material from the ocean i would stay the hell away from this strap um i tried on the first day to get used to it i tried my best this strap is just too damn stiff uh it is very uncomfortable uh, and i really couldn't gel with it and on top of that you know a couple of days or a couple of hours should i self wearing it i noticed it did start to fray down the center i would definitely opt for the hybrid rubber strap option if you wanted to go for a strap but of course i'd definitely go for the bracelet option the bracelets are good and it'll feel better on wrist in my opinion so let's give you guys an idea of the dimensions you've got a 42 and a half millimeter case if we include the crown guards to the side of the case it is 43.5 millimeters you've got a 14 millimeter depth a 49 millimeter log to log a 22 millimeter log width and two seven millimeter crowns and an overall weight of 110 grams. Now, I will say something on the 22 millimeter log width. Previously, when I first got into watches, I did not see an issue with 22 millimeter log widths. And but I did notice a lot of subscribers commenting in those days that, you know, only if it was 20 mil, 20 mil, 20 mil. And, and I didn't really understand. 
But now, you know, two years and a bit on into the channel, I've seen so many watches that are 40 mil diameter, 42s even, uh, and they come with that 20 mil uh, log width. And I understand it now. And with this, just have a look at the width of the strap. Uh, and that is one of the first things I looked at and I hoped, you know, it should have been 20 millimeters to give you that nice taper. Um, yeah, so I think this log width is a bit wide. And again, it looked much better on the bracelet, but as far as on the straps, you know, it doesn't really do it for me. So with regards to packaging, we're not going to go into it at all. Just got the usual bits and bobs that you get. You know, your 60, 60 guarantee, that's the main thing. You've got 60 days money back and you've got 60 months of guarantee, I believe. So let's uh, kick off the review of this Christopher Wood C60 Limestone by having a good old look at the dial. And on top of that gorgeous forged carbon dial with all that texturing and the different gradients of color present, you will find a whole host of printing which is present in the text, the numerals and the markings around the rotating inner bezel, the dial hour markers, and as well as being below the 12 and just above the 6. Now you'll notice that Christopher Ward logo, they have gone with written text rather than that twin flag logo, which we've been seeing on the newer models. I was under the impression that they are sticking with that twin flag logo. However, they have put the logo back in the center. And one thing that you can notice and definitely does stand out is the use of these orange accents. And I love how they've used it on the bezel insert, as well as that orange seconds hand and just below the chronometer text, the, the water resistance rating. That's a lovely splash of colour and it really does make the watch dial pop and it stops it looking drab. Now when we move on to the hour markers, these have been exceptionally finished. You know, for such a tool watch, uh, you'd expect something quite plain and simple, but the finishing on these hour markers and the handset is of a high premium quality. Now uh, each individual hour marker has got polished bevel edges all around and they've been finished with this coarse hairline brushing going across the top. And that provides really good light play when you look against this dial and it does help distinguish those hour markers on the dial and that finishing is also present on the hands the hands that used is traditional crystal wall style hands and you can see they've got some really sharp angles and the hands are covered in some heavily detailed finishing with the hour hand you can see along the tip you've got some coarse linear brushing which switches to polished bevel edges along the sides of the hands and along the stem of the actual hand you've got again that linear brushing and that's pretty much the same for the minute hand that linear brushing present through the center those polished edges and just the tip does have that coarse brushing giving it a very sharp look indeed and all these finishes really help the light reflect uh, they force it to react in certain ways uh, and it does increase that visibility of those hands it gives the hands a very sharp appearance and you'll notice that dial does also feature a dateless configuration i like this dateless design as i mentioned the whole military series is all dateless now um and you know i, I feel it right i think the longer you collect watches you know and you've got a bit of a watch collection you don't want to be setting the date you just want to pick up the watch set the time and just keep it moving and this watch definitely allows you to do that and I love that symmetry there. It gives you a very clean dial. All the markers are there untouched and it allows you to really appreciate that forged carbon dial. Everything just looks great the way it is. Now I did say that this watch is an absolute loom beast. So I'll tell you to get ready for this one. How is that for a loom shot? You've got Swiss Super Luminova Grade X1 GLC1 applied throughout. You've got it on the bezel markers. You also got it on the inner rotating bezel as well as the hour markers and the handset. Uh, and I love the loom on this watch. Absolute loom beast. Everything is loomed as you'd expect it to be. Um, they haven't really penny pinched anywhere when creating this watch. And like I said, it makes for a stunning, stunning visual. And even the rotating bezel is quite important to do because again, if you are out in the sticks and you need to use it, you know, you need the bezel to be loomed. And they've made sure the loom is deep filled, enabling it to be very bright uh, as it is it's also a dive watch and i'm very impressed with how christopher ward have done the loom on the c60 so now due to the use of a steel crown uh, in this watch we'll see a new iteration of the light catcher case and you can see this case has got the same features as the light catcher but of course with that gunmetal pvd coating you don't get those polished surfaces and one of the reasons they've done that is to stop all the unwanted flashing and uh, you know light reflection that one might face in a combat situation especially when you're looking at you know, uh, sniper walls, etc. Um, but what you'll find is the finishing is of the same high standard. You've got this linear brushing present across the logs, very fine, satinized, and then where the watch does transition and you've got the bevel edges, you've got a very smooth surface instead of a polished surface. And again, those linear, smooth brushing lines across the side of the case. Now, the bezel, you'll notice also PVD coated in a darker color, so you get a really nice contrast with the watch case. So it's not fully black and not fully 
uh, you know, gunmetal. And I like that they've gone with the gunmetal color. You know, PVD watches, there's loads of them, uh, but I really am a huge fan of this gunmetal case. Uh, and as well, you know, if I had the bracelet, I think this watch would have looked gorgeous uh, in hand. When we move over to the crowns, as I said, two crowns being used, which are seven millimeter in diameter. So that is necessary because you need loads of grip. Uh, very functional crowns. We've got the twin flag logo on each crown. Very nicely done. You know, you've got large splines giving you great usability maybe in a variety of different instances but you know even with gloves i can easily rotate the crowns uh, and screw them back in it's got very buttery smooth threads uh, so you know great functionality very high quality case you can definitely tell in hand now due to the two crowns you've also got a crown guard on the side uh, which helps protect them slightly um, but yeah so i'm you know really a fan of the finishing and the color used and of course that pvd coating on the bezel and when we turn the watch around you also get a darker pvd coating on the case back now on the back of the watch christopher ward has laser etched the royal marine logo and you've got further specifications written on the back so that's a nice case back you know very smooth and nicely done looking at the bezel the insert is a circular brushed steel insert as you can see the deep fill numerals we saw the loom shot it works really well and with the machining side of it really nice thick grip uh, allowing you to grip it again you know with the gloves there's no issue actually gripping it so let's check out the bezel rotation no looseness you know no back play no wobbliness in that bezel very precise clicks and of course it does line up perfectly i think that's just one more click and we've got perfectly lined up bezel. It's quite a tactile feel, as you'd expect. Um, functions really well. No play, as I said. And it also lines up perfectly well. So we are nearing the end of the review. The last thing left is for me to put this on wrist. So let me take off this wax strap and put something on uh, that I feel is a little more comfortable. And I'll show you guys what it looks like on wrist. So this is the C60 Limpstone on my 6.5 inch wrist. And the strap I've gone for is a paramilitary style strap. Um, I've gone for a sort of a green with an orange, something different, you know, rather than black. Uh, but the orange line obviously complementing the orange accents on the dial and the watch case. So it's a very comfortable watch strap um, and the case itself is quite comfortable. As you can see, even though it is like 43 millimeters uh, and the 49 millimeter log to log, it does fit well on wrist. Uh, it's got a really good weight and it is very comfortable wearing it on this paratrooper strap much more comfortable than the one it came with and i think that's a good look now there's a second strap i want to try it's a bit of a hybrid rubber strap and let's see how the watch fits on that now the second strap choice is this fkm rubber hybrid strap and this is the strap that i've been wearing it uh, for most of the time while i've had this watch and you know it feels good uh, and it looks good as well it's got the black and orange you know matching the accents on the watch now both straps are available on my ebay store in case you want to have a look um, but yeah, in, you know, in terms of fitting with the watch, they fit really well. Uh, and as I said, the watch has great presence on the wrist. I'm really happy with what I've got in front of me. Now to summarize, um, I really love what they've done with this watch. Uh, it seems really purpose built. Uh, they've looked at every aspect of the watch, tied it in with the military uh, and especially with the Royal Marines. And I think in line with the price, I think this is probably more justified than anything else. Um, looking at the level of workmanship gone into this and of course you know the features that I've just gone through uh, the use of that forged carbon dial uh, you know the level of finishing on the hour markers and the handset that bezel the secondary crown the inner rotating bezel so I believe that further justifies that £1,095 price so that being said I've got no issue with the price and I think this is a fantastic watch so if you're looking for the next you know best tool watch to get uh, something which uh, just has loads of function behind it and looks as badass as this one definitely check out the Christopher Ward C60 Limpstone that is available on their website so that's it for me today guys thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video